Hello, my name is Adam Leach, and I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. The Prime Minister of Sweden visited Washington today, and my tiny little nipples went to France. Welcome to my channel. I am an audio engineer, empathetic human being, and music lover first, and pretentious prick last. I'm a little late to the party on this one, but today we're gonna do a song by song breakdown and review of the new Phineas album, Optimist, which is ironically a rather depressing listen. So, let's get to it. This album is Phineas, Phine, Phine, Phineas's, Phine, Phineas? This is his second project he's given us, and it gives us that signature alt-pop sad boy sound we love him for. Chock full of heartfelt piano ballads, Optimist opens up with the song A Concert Six Months From Now, an acoustic guitar-driven love song that starts with simplicity, with guitar and a cheering crowd under his rich layered vocals. It builds and drives into a short, unexpected, massive band-driven chorus, then takes us back down for the remainder of the song. This is a beautiful love song about an on-off relationship, and he ends with asking asking if he can take this girl to a concert six months from now, that which he calls himself an optimist for already having the tickets for. I think that's probably a double meaning, one being that this was written during COVID where there was every possibility of things shutting back down again, but most importantly to him, they very well might not be together six months from now. It's a solid opener that sets the emotional and stylistic tone for the rest of the album. Next up, the kids are all dying. No, that's not a news headline. <laughs> that's the name of the next song. I think the lyrics are fairly open to interpretation, but to me this track opens by depicting the world banging on your door, pitching new causes to support that will save the world, creating this sense of stress, confusion, and pressure on how you should live and how you should spend your money, and channeling some serious Bo Burnham inside energy. The chorus reads, how can you sing about love when the kids are all dying? How can you sing about drugs? Politicians are lying. How can you sing about sex when the school is on lockdown? In the second verse, he touches on toxic internet culture and how people make snap judgments and won't feel any better about themselves until you feel bad about yourself. Then during a portion of the song, he kind of slips into a state of apathy where he says, and good God, we never catch a break. Whatever's on the news, the other side will call it fake. I wish I was the queen. I'd tell them all to eat their cake. Maybe humankind was just God's mistake. I'd honestly be lying if I said I hadn't had that thought multiple times myself in my life. This song is just so good. The lyrics give you something to ponder with numerous ways that you can interpret what he meant. It's cynical, it's satirical, yet serious. It's kind of all over the place topic-wise and tone-wise, and I think that was the intention. The music does an excellent job of complimenting the lyrics while guiding the mood and steering you towards listening. In a lot of reviews I read, the critics just flat out miss the mark on this song. Like, it's subjective, but I would venture to say that pretentiousness got in the way of some people enjoying and interpreting this song. Like, why do some critics have to be so blatantly mean? Like, calm down. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? Dude, some critics, like, I swear. Critics be mean. Like, they need to go to that island in VeggieTales where people are tickled forever. The punishment should be banishment to the island of perpetual tickling. Then we get into the song Happy Now, another great track that is about him supposedly being this superstar who is supposed to be happy, but not only is he not happy, but he feels like he's just pretending to be this superstar that society has labeled him as. And he really doesn't know who he is anymore. This song gives you everything you could want instrumentally, from a whistle break to sax and brass instruments. I love the bouncy vibe to this one, and at this point in the album, it feels like Phineas's personal diary set to a soundtrack. Then going into a more emotional listen, we have Only a Lifetime. This song is driven mostly by piano, which by the way, I think what I'm hearing is one of the pedals squeaking in this song. And I got a request, Phineas, you gotta oil that bad boy ASAP, okay? Grease me up, woman! There's some beautiful atmospheric sounds in the background, and this backing vocal that sounds like it's a distorted tape recording or something, which just kind of adds to the feeling, like it feels like it's an old distorted memory playing in the back of your mind. I find this track to be hauntingly beautiful in the most depressing way. This is another one I've seen critics rip apart for being cliche, but don't you think in this distracting comparison filled digital age that we need to be reminded more than ever not to wish your life away and enjoy the people you love now while you can? We all act like it's so cliche and like we've heard it all before, but that's, that's the problem. We need Need to be hearing it less and feeling it more. If you sit in a dark room and close your eyes and really listen to this and, and let the weight actually hit you, like stop thinking about it as a cliche and think about what it really means and what he's really talking about. If a tear doesn't fall from your eye, I 
I honestly question your humanity. Or maybe you need to go to a therapist because you might just be detached from reality. Fading out of that song, we get a drastically different musical feel from the previous track with the song The 90s. We hear an auto-tune drenched Phineas reminiscing about being a kid in the 90s where the future was exciting, he wasn't famous yet, and the internet wasn't around for people to find all of your information. I know where you live. Though it feels different, it does tie in with the last song lyrically as he wishes he hadn't spent so much time worrying as a kid. This song has this really interesting instrumental break that is just this distorted electronic pulse. I hated it at first, but I'm kind of super into it now and it makes it makes sense. Then we get slapped in the face with the sad reality that love is pain. This is a slow and low song with a hauntingly beautiful emotional feel to it. The piano, the rich layered vocals, some strings, some more distorted sounds in the background tying in with the theme felt a few songs ago. This is a sad track about the painful side of love, not just loving a significant other, but loving your friends, your family. Now in the verses, it seems to be him telling a story from his perspective. And then in the chorus is he switches to the second person view, which makes it more personal to you as you listen. It's just painful. There is this verse where he wakes up from a dream about his parents dying and it's just so depressing to think about. There's this dream I've had about mom and dad it makes me so sad. I wake up crying. Can't believe I'll have to live through that. Wish it wasn't mandatory dying. The closing verse is even more painful. We go through life, we play pretend, act like it doesn't have to end. It's all right until your friend runs a red light. You watch his car burst into flames. Love is pain. It hits on this reality that we skip through life pretending that it won't happen, but then you see a friend die and it all comes crashing down on you. From what I understand, Phineas did lose a couple friends in a car accident a few years ago, which makes this song just even more sad. Then smack dab in the middle of the album, we have a piano interlude called Peach's Etude. I don't know if that's how you pronounce that word. <laughs> Apparently Phineas had recently adopted a pit bull named Peaches, so as an animal lover, I can definitely respect and appreciate devoting a beautiful piano piece to your furry child. I love this piano piece more every time I listen to it, and I think that it fits perfectly in the middle of this album. After that interlude, we get into Hurt Locker, another sad song about a deteriorating relationship. Phineas ponders the point of life if there aren't consequences. It's a nice song, simple, mostly driven by a nice piano melody and a pumping drum that almost sounds like a heartbeat. There's this nice, like, bit crushed percussion sound in the chorus. By this point in the album, I'm pretty invested in this slow, sad emotion that this album is exuding, but I am ready for something different. I'm ready for a switch up. Album is so sad. Need pick me up. Well, Phineas heard my cries because Medieval is a totally different pace. The melody is super catchy and vibey. The song is dynamic. He stretches his vocals a little more. The song seems to speak on current culture and draws comparisons to medieval times where people were brutally executed at the snap of a finger when the kingdom was finished with them. Off with his head. Some people believe that this is referring to cancel culture and how we build people up to fame only to tear them down and metaphorically behead them the moment they make a mistake regardless of their intent. I think that's a likely commentary that he could be making, though I think it's also likely that there is a parallel commentary on how pop culture operates behind the scenes. Stars are put on this pedestal as this new thing. They have to bend over backwards to kiss the rings of the right people to stay relevant, say the right things, believe the right things, have the right opinions. They're milked for content and squeezed dry. Then the industry cast them aside, and once that happens, it's just not worth it to resurrect their image. They're used and abused and thrown away. It's definitely a great track and a lot to unpack and interpret from the lyrics, and it has a lot to offer musically too with the synths and thick layered vocal harmonies. After that, we get into the song Someone Else's Star. This track touches on the struggles of fame causing him and probably his sister too to grow up faster than he was meant to, and the idea that your life is basically entertainment, that your bad memories equate to dollar signs. One lyric reads, now all your memories feel more like films, you put them on to see which ones still kill. You wonder why the bad ones paid the bills. I read this article where someone put into words what I couldn't about this song. They said, I can't imagine what it's like to mine your painful memories for lyrics or content and watch strangers consume it as entertainment. Quite heartbreaking really, especially when you dump your emotions and bad memories into your music and then critics grill them and pull them apart. But as an artist in this industry, that's kind of the price that you pay to pay the bills, I guess. Then we get yet another welcome vibe change. Around My Neck is a rather kinky song with a lot of playful percussion and synth lines bouncing around the background and infectious melody and all around great vocals from background to foreground. When the chorus builds to its peak towards the end and Phineas really gets into it, like he is exuding pure, like 
Caucasian Lenny Kravitz energy. This is what I want from Phineas more and his sister too. We like the quiet, emotional, whispery sounds, but you both have beautiful voices. Let them out, show us. This song is so much fun. It's way different than the other tracks and it's probably one of my most revisited ones on this album. <laughs> After that song, is it hot in here or what? Then what they'll say about us has this depth of old crusty, dusty, crusty crab pizza, distorted sounding synth melodies in the back. <laughs> that again lines straight up with the rest of the album and its emotions. This one just has you floating and it makes you feel something. Sadness, hope, I don't know. I'll read what Phineas said himself about this one. I wrote this song in June after spending the day at a protest in downtown LA, filled with hope with the prospect that millions of people were coming together from all over the world to fight against institutionalized racism and inequality. During that time, I'd been following Amanda Klutz as she documented her husband, Nick Cordero's time in the ICU while in a coma after being admitted for COVID-19. Imagining her sitting by his side waiting, hopeful for him to wake up. It got me thinking about the millions of people all over the world who also have loved ones, parents, children, and extended family members going through the same thing, fighting this horrific virus. Some will overcome and wake up again while others tragically may not. This song is dedicated to all who have had to endure this year. I hope this song can offer some sort of comfort to those who may need it. So Nick unfortunately did not push through his battle with COVID and passed away at only 41 years old. His son was only a year old. In the last lines of this song, Phineas seems to directly reference this by singing, you're tired now, lie down, I'll be waiting to give you the good news. It might take patience. And if you don't wake up, I'll know you tried to. I wish you could see him. He looks just like you. It's one of those that's just, it's beautiful from a musical perspective, but the meaning and intention behind it really propel it further. Then in the final song, How It Ends, set over what sounds like, like a backwards cassette recording or something. Groovy bass line, some pumping percussion, and a beautiful melody filled with guitars, bells, everything else that you could want in a song. This track makes you feel like you could just dance and float away. <laughs> I love pretty much everything about this song, from the pumping drums, groovy bass line, and awesome vocal effects to the cynical yet joyful energy. And it is a perfect way to cap off this album. So what is my final breakdown? And most importantly, what's my rating? <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've listened to this album. Uh, my feelings changed multiple times. I listened to it back to back to back, inside, outside, on my one wheel in the sun, in the dark, in the shower. I will eat them in the rain and in the dark and on a train. I even took a week away from it and came back to listen again just to be sure what my final feeling was, which is why this has taken so long. Ultimately, the more time I spent with the lyrics trying to feel and interpret his intention and emotion, the more I fell in love with it. Phineas has this take it or leave it style at some insist he should stay in the background behind his sister. I wholeheartedly disagree. In fact, I'm kind of mad seeing how mean people are about that. If you feel that way, I challenge you to a duel. Straight up, I know musical opinions are subjective, but I, I, I want to fight you. I like Phineas more than Billy. I love his sister, but Phineas just has this energy about him. I find him to be more versatile. I think he is the most talented as a singer, musician, producer, and songwriter. Less people might listen to him as a solo artist, but he is playing a pivotal role in Billy sound too. Both of them have a massive hand in how pop music is evolving right now. If you like Billy, you like Phineas, you just don't know you do. Optimist is a very cohesive, emotionally moving album with lyrical depth. Now, as far as critiques, Optimist does have a different feel than his previous album, Blood Harmony. Optimist is low and slow most of the time, and you get used to it if you're into that, but I could see some people getting bored with it. And I think Blood Harmony had a little bit different of a feel that appeals to more people. Now also putting them next to each other, it's clear that there were some mixing differences. I think Blood Harmony definitely had this more more beefy in your face sort of mixing to it. So because of that, Optimus does kind of lack this certain energy or beefiness that his previous project had. Considering all that, I give this album a very rock solid B to B plus. I think his previous album, Blood Harmony, had some serious strengths that this record may have fallen a little short on, but it also felt totally different in a good way. I'm not really sure which one I love more. Optimus offered this very emotional experience that I enjoyed exploring, both from a musical and lyrical perspective. Like I always say, music is very subjective. None of us are right or wrong. We all experience things differently. The way that I experienced this album, I loved it. I fell in love with it. I can't wait to hear Phineas experiment and expand more with his sound, get a little more dynamic. I love a nice, soft, emotional album, but I'd love to hear him do like an upbeat type of album someday. So tell me, what did you think? What was your favorite song? Which of his albums is better? And what album is coming out that you'd like to see me review? Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking around. I will see you very soon. And remember, I love you and there is nothing you can do about it.
Have an excellent day.